alive. Hey, everybody. Good morning. Hi, Lisa. Hi, how's it going? <laughs> Good. We are so happy you guys are here. We have a super big announcement because we had our fantastic contest going on over the last week. And gosh, it was so hard to pick the winner. You guys were amazing. Uh, you sent your submission via the Airtable form. And Lisa and I kind of went over all the submissions. And it's like, oh, my gosh, this is really hard to choose. But in the end, we chose, drum roll, <laughs> Maureen Berger from Pennsylvania is the winner of six of these flat, beautiful panels that she can paint on. And she is going to be shipped six beautiful frames from Rex Art Frames. We want to thank Rex Art for this wonderful opportunity for people to try out their frames and try out their beautiful panels that fit right in like that. Again, eighth inch or quarter inch. And uh, they're just an amazing USA company. You guys, everything is made in the USA. Family company, great customer service great products. And they don't just have this, they have custom panels and, and uh, all kinds of art supplies. So thank you, Rex Art Frames, for this wonderful opportunity to try your supplies. Okay. Yes. And congratulations, Maureen. Yeah, we're all cheering for you, Maureen. Yeah, we can't wait to see what you do on them. Yes. Okay. So welcome to Linda. There's Maureen. Yay. Terry Kofel, um, Jeanette, Robert Simmons, Diane, Diana, and uh, Pam. All of you guys, thank you for being here. We really yes. appreciate it. Now, okay, uh, Lisa, topic for today is abstracting the landscape. And well, we hope you guys, yeah, we yeah, hope you're Maureen chose, right? Yeah, so, th yeah, thank you, Lisa. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> you know, the obvious, the reason I'm doing this is because this is Maureen's, you guys, of course, want to know what her challenge is, right? Duh. Okay, so Maureen had this great idea of um, abstracting or simplifying the landscape, which I think is such a, an important, important topic because we as artists, um, let's just say that, you know, we have a photograph here, right? This is a photograph of a landscape. So we're going to be talking about how do we take this um, a step further and make it more our own, right? Like, what can we do to add our own personal spin on the landscape? So let's just begin with this guy here. And I have written down about eight, eight, top, eight of my top ways. Now, they may not be your top ways, but I encourage you guys to think outside the box. Um, I'm just going to share with you, like, my top ways, how I would do this and I went onto the internet and just, you know, typed in uh, landscape, right? Like landscape photos. Um, you can also look for landscape artists or abstract landscape artists. So Google's kind of my friend and Lisa's friend is Google. We all Google. Yes. <laughs> Uh, or, or we all, what's the other one? Firefox. You can all Firefox or you can all Safari. <laughs> you can all edit or whatever. No, whatever you want, it's you know? Google. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite, guys. But yeah. the point is that when you, when you know, okay, so these guys here, these photos are probably copyrighted in most cases, right? Because this is somebody's photo. Yes. And when you Google, you get all kinds of things, but most of them are copyrighted. You have to be really careful. So like, even if you were to print this out and say, oh, I love this, I'm going to paint it, um, you know, nine times out of 10, you're going to be fine because you're painting and this is a photograph. But what is, but that that's beyond the point, like copyright is one thing, right? But what we want to know anyways, is how can we make this our own? Like we're not the artist who took this photograph. We are, we have a different life, different experiences, and we want to make a spin on this so that it's like, wow, that that's really far removed from this. So what I've done here is, um, now I, I know I started with this, this photograph here, but my, my top one, first thing that you can do I wanted to show you this this photograph here, right? So I found this online. You can kind of see that <laughs> these little arrows up there, and that came from finding this on Google. But in, in landscapes, okay, this is called atmospheric perspective, where you have 
uh, the darks come darks and detail are in the foreground. Then you've got your um, your middle of the painting or photograph, and then you've got your background uh, sky. And what happens is the atmosphere, all the air and you know dust particles and everything, um, they impact all these mountain ranges mm -hmm. back, and they get lighter and lighter. Okay, so darks come forward, um, and the midtones and lights uh, go back. So one thing you can do is flip the atmospheric perspective. And what I did was I flipped it in Photoshop so you could kind of see what I mean here. Um, so if you were to say, find this photograph or take it yourself, and you're like, how can I, like, how can I make this really different? Um, what you're saying, to abstract your landscape, you're trying to find new ways to say something. And when you think about a landscape, think about breaking it down into its shapes, its colors, its textures, its direction, right? So the design elements are basically how you're going to break down what you start with. You start with something if, if that's what you want to do. You don't have to start with a photograph at all, but we're just right now talking about that. And then you're like, okay, I've got this. Uh, whoever took this photograph, um, these are the colors, but you don't have to keep those colors. You don't have to keep these values. So if you invert it, you're gonna get this. Now, if you were to do a painting like this, and then just, this is basically achromatic. There's no real color in here, but you could say, okay, I'm gonna do a monochromatic palette. I'm gonna use red plus white and black. I'm gonna use green plus white and black. Obviously that would be very, very different from this. And now we're talking about color. So the first thing we've talked about here is value. You can easily flip values and, it, it just does this weird thing in your head because you're you're looking at this and it you know it still looks like this but you're like well wait a minute the this is really light yet i know those mountains are in the background so or or like they're in the foreground but they're really really light so you're like well why are these mountains which are in the background they're just much much lighter so it just does a little play on your head, which is a good thing, right? Because you want to um, add mystery. And plus, if you chose to do this, that would be your idea. Okay, so um, another thing is to add geometry. So what I've done here is, again, I've taken this one photograph. And what I've done now, some of you have access to software and things like that. And what I've done here is I've played with the color, because again, we don't have to use the local color. Local color means um, a sky is blue, trees are green, um, meadows and grass are green, flowers, these flowers are yellow, these flowers are purple. That's local color, meaning like what you see is, is what it is, right? But you, as an artist, that's the cool thing. That's the, the amazing thing about being an artist is that give yourself artistic freedom to say, well, um, I'm going to change my palette, number one, like let's say that I don't even have blue on my palette and I don't have green and I don't have yellow. You might choose some other colors like, you know, red and you might have purple, um, yellow. But what I did here, and again, this was Photoshop and you don't have to have Photoshop. You just have to have an imagination. Uh, you can look at this meadow here and say, okay, well, this is like, you know, it's yellow and green, but what if I want yellow and red? And then what if I want to just like, like, you know, have this weird texture and this, this has been, this has a rectilinear line here. It has somewhat almost a rectilinear line here, but not quite, it's not quite as sharp as here. But what, what I've done is taken this and changed the local color and added some geometry to that. So you can see how creative you can be. Like there's no end to how creative you can be. So don't let a photo um, which is your, your left brain is going to say, okay, uh, you as an artist need to copy this exactly as it is because you're an artist and, you know, green is green and, and blue is blue and, you know, the mountains are kind of grayish and that's what you better do. That's what your left brain is telling you, right, Lisa? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> but, but in Lisa's world and in my world, you know, we're like, no, 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 my sky is going to be red and, uh, you know, my face is going to be purple. <laughs> <laughs> and I might go crazy and turn it upside down. <laughs> exactly. And you know, if you throw this color in here like this, and again, it was done, you know, digitally, but that almost looks like a lake now. So you've just transformed that photo. And um, so I wanted to point that out now. So color does not have to be local. And then 
see here. I did some other things with color. So you don't have to break it up into geometry if you don't want to. What if you just want to play with like different color schemes? So here's one of uh, one different color scheme. And then here's a color. Oh, look at those colors. Oh, you know me. I love color. You see, Lisa is responding. Do you know why she's responding to this? Because she likes Brian Rutenberg. <laughs> 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 These are kind of Brian Rutenberg colors. I, I couldn't even help myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's got pink on today, you know, and you oh, know, she's all about color. <laughs> so don't limit yourself. Um, I, I really challenge you guys to take some kind of photograph that's, you know, uh, like this and really, really play with the color. So those would be some main things. And um, the next thing you want to think about doing is that um, you want to think about distorting forms, right? So there's distortion that is a, a big deal. Uh, it's, a, it's a big tool, I should say, when you're trying to abstract something. So um, what I would say is that here um, in my sketchbook, <laughs> well, first of all, I had this, this photo of cows, right? And I... <laughs> I love cows. I grew up in Wisconsin. And when I was um, really young, I apparently invited one into our, in our little trailer home. Type oh. thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I still love cows. But one thing you can do is spend some time um, with shape. So shape is a really important part of any landscape, right? You've got trees, but how do you want to, how do you want to like, um, like, how do you want to personalize the shapes? that are in any photograph, any landscape, whether it's cows, whether it's trees, whether it's a house, whether it's a barn. Um, <clears throat> one thing I like to do is I, because I, I have this like love of geometry and I have a love of rectilinear. So for me, I looked at this photo and I just started to like say, okay, if I were doing a tree, it would probably be like that. And then I did other trees like that. And then if I, for the other thing you can do is blind contour drawing. So you can like take your cows <laughs> and <coughs> I was looking at this and doing a blind contour drawing. So you can kind of see how that's another way to remove yourself from reality. So what you're trying to do is move yourself away from reality so that you get something that's really personally you. It only could have come from you, whether it's color, shape, texture, size, um, Obviously, you could blow the cow way up this guy, and I'll show you that in a little bit. Um, you can change this composition, but uh, so blind contour drawing is another way to distort your shapes. A very important thing that you might want to try. And then, um, greatly simplified shapes are also a wonderful way to think about the landscape. And I want to share um, this book by Milton Avery, who is just like a master of simplifying things. And I so admire his work. And I'll show you another artist's work as well. But what I love about his landscapes, um, and here's here's the cover, but you know, he's not uh, holding himself to the literal landscape. He's look, there's like a pink sky, and he's broken it down into simple shapes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven shapes. And you see them because of value and color differences. So imagine if you can start to do things, you know, I, even if you don't love this artist, it's a great challenge. I saw Helen Frankenthaler um, a while ago. And what appealed to me was the fact that she simplified it down to seven shapes. And in my mind, I was thinking, wow, if I could look at a landscape and simplify it down to just seven shapes that are my own, right? Um, and my own colors, like these colors are so unusual as well. They're very personal to this artist. And so um, as you look through the book, and these are all taken from the book, I just printed these out because I, okay. <laughs> uh oh, all right. Hey, we're getting um, a view of Pam's studio. Isn't that interesting? Oh, I know what's happening, guys. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's my ceiling. Yes. <laughs> And we got, it was wonderful going around in a circle. That's weird though. Like how do, you, how do I get back to this? <clears throat> I don't know. Maybe I should take it off a solo. Hang on a sec. Let me see if I can. Or do you want me to leave it big so you can see what it's doing? Well, um, 
we never know what's going to happen here, you guys. Isn't this fun? Always yeah. a surprise and an adventure. Yes, the winner was Maureen Berger, and she will receive the Rex Art frames and panels. And her suggestion was abstracting the landscape. So that's what Pam's talking about is <laughs> different ways. And we just abstracted the landscape by going around in a circle, right? <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys. Well, that'll teach you if you're putting a hardcover book on top of the little um, the remote. remote. Yeah. <laughs> I learned something new, guys. Um, okay, All so right. here, yeah, here is um, another beautiful Milton Avery, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit again without uh, hopefully being a little bit more careful. <laughs> so again, let's count, count how many shapes there are in this uh, particular landscape. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. I would say um, as a really wonderful challenge. And, and again, this was part of Maureen's challenge. And I, I, the reason why that challenge really spoke to me is because this is so not easy. <laughs> That's right. <clears throat> to be able to see uh, to look at something and break it down into its simplest form, this is the essence of, you know, less is more, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, that's what this artist, uh, he's known for this. Um, he's done figures, lots of figures. And so let's look at a few more. Um, so there's this one. Look at how he has done the water. Um, it is water, but he has his own way of doing the texture there. If it'll focus. Ooh. Now, the interesting thing is that he carried this type of texture into, um, well, you can see that I think that he might have done these at a similar time, right? Because yeah. um, this is a blow up in a way of that same kind of treatment, same kind of sky. But, you know, so again, he might have done these at a similar time. We don't really know. And then here's one more that, um, again, how many shapes do we have here? We've got... And we, we see these mostly by value. So one, and this is lighter, but you know, you can kind of, if you squint, this is kind of one shape. So one, two, three, four, and then, you know, maybe five and six. So really, really um, challenge yourself. Um, just really, this, this is kind of an exercise that I think we should all be doing almost all the time, regardless of what we're doing, even in totally non-landscape art, you know, if we're not trying to abstract the landscape, um, in our work, the more we can simplify things down to seven shapes, that is just a really hard thing to do, but you know, it can be done. So, um, so I wanted to show you that. <clears throat> and then, I can get my shirt here. okay, <clears throat> any questions so far? Like, has anyone tried any of those things? Lori said it reminds her of some Richard Diebenkorn art, which of course she loves. Shapes, large shapes are in her future. <laughs> yeah, Lisa, if you want to pin any comments, that would be great too. Okay. Yeah. And Terry Koffel, is that how you pronounce your name, Terry? She says Helen Frankenthaler is one of her faves. Yeah. And... <laughs> my comment, I, I meant to say, my comment was in the chat was we are abstracting the landscape. And of course, <laughs> lovely autocorrect says we are answering the landscape. So that's always fun. <laughs> Gotta love autocorrect, right? Right. Maureen Howard says she's so happy. Maureen suggested this topic. It's one she's been working on with more Good. and less success. <clears throat> cool. Okay, so... Um, a few other things that are just a little, you know, again, I, I really encourage you guys to kind of go crazy with your, uh, and I've got like one of my things to do is to go crazy, right? So that's, that's a little bit beyond, uh, and what I mean by that is, um, well, first of all, let me, if you guys have cropping angles, this is how you can change your the way that you view something, right? So let me just pull this over like this. So we've got our, our photo like that. And if you have cropping angles like these guys, right, you just cut them out of Bristol board or whatever they are um, and really just play with them. Like, again, you don't have to take what you what nature gives you. You, you can play with what nature gives you and, and changing the division of space, which is that 
in this case, the sky and the grass are about half and half, right? Like this band here is a little um, larger than say the, the grassy area, but you know, it doesn't have to be about sky at all. It could be like what you really wanna talk about here, what you really wanna paint is maybe this cow, right? So by cropping, um, get out your cropping angles and, and really challenge yourself. Um, now this, if I were to crop this, it's a little humorous because number one, um, this cow is, uh, he's been cropped and then there's a tail the tail of this guy connects to the, the butt, you know? So again, what if you want humor, right? So if you want humor, uh, you know, you can do some crazy things. Like, you know, what if, what if this is what you're all about? If, if you're like an artist who loves humor, yeah. Um, again, this is where your personality can really come into the picture. <laughs> Look at his crazy shadow too. That's yeah. a, that's a crazy shape, isn't it? <laughs> it's is like, what if, what if you did this and you're like, what the heck are we looking at? But then you see this really weird shadow, right? So <laughs> All the feet, Lori says. <laughs> yeah. All the it's, legs and the feet. <laughs> it's, right. It's really fun. Now look, you could also do like, if you know, changing the format, you have yeah. to do an eight by 10 or like a six <laughs> by six, you know, no, what if you do a super skinny thing like this? And you're like, oh my gosh. What the heck is that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just fun it to is. play with these. And then what if you just like, okay, I, I love cow I love cows, guys, but yes, um, it's just it's fun to now th there's a bit of humor, but there's also a bit of mystery, right? So if this were my painting, which is actually quite cool, I mean it's black, yeah. white, a little bit of color, but if you were to just do a painting like this, people would be like, Wow, I mean, what is that? First it's of all, cool. and they yeah. So again, um, maybe, maybe you're just trying to like, you know, maybe your thing is about being in a hurry, <laughs> trying to get, oh, sorry, help if I wasn't off the, um, oh, yeah, yeah, it's all about like life and you're, you're in a hurry and he's on the move, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, I when think you, maybe when your camera spun, maybe it got things off center or something. I don't know. Yeah. Well, tell me it isn't so. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. Oh, I see. Yeah, it's like, hang on. <laughs> there, oh, there we go. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Lisa. I was like, well, why is this not in the center? I okay. know. I couldn't figure out what you were talking about being in a hurry. Now I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, the other thing that's kind of fun, I've got this whole punch just just for demonstration purposes, right? So, um, okay. So I'm gonna punch here, and I'm gonna punch here. Um, now I do have you know, a similar photograph uh, that's different colors. So you can kind of just play with these little guys. Um, not only do these themselves give you like a great idea of like, well, maybe that could be, um, that's, that's what that is, you guys, is a very macro view. So right, these little guys, if I can zoom in and, and we'll see if, if it gets clear or not, but um, <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> Um, let's try these little postage stamp deals here. Um, yeah, so there can be a landscape in these little um, chunks here. Wow, it's really not Whoa. liking it. Is yeah, it? it's not liking it, is it? Okay, but the reason I wanted to show you that anyways was because if you take one of these other landscapes, like... Mm, Here we go. Okay, so like this guy. Um, and you take these little guys. So in other words, if you had two ideas like this and you're sort of mixing and matching, but you want to add a sense of geometry to something. <clears throat> I mean, and you got to like think, you know, you're really thinking outside the box here. You're trying to um, put your own spin on something here. And simply by cross pollinating between two photographs, see, and I took this purple from here. Well, purple wasn't even, I mean, it's, there's some purple here, but I mean, this is, this is how you can start to, to add your sense of geometry or your sense of personality. Um, the value difference between these two areas is not that great. So if you kind of pop it into an area where there's not a huge value difference, you almost don't even notice it. 
If you put it in the middle of the field, yeah, now you're going to notice it. But again, this is how you play with um, different ideas. You've got your hole punch. You've got blind contour drawing. You've got inverting the values. You've got changing the colors. And these are just some some fab fabulous ways. If you know, if you walk into a gallery and you see a landscape. It's so refreshing to see like an artist's spin on the landscape. And uh, so these are just some ideas that I wanted to show you before getting into. Um, <clears throat> so I love like, that, Pam. I'm sorry I was answering a comment okay. in the chat, but I love putting those geometric, those squares in there. Yeah. Um, with the different colors. I, I see people do that. And I've just never thought of it. And now that you've broken it down, I'm thinking, oh, wow, I love that. Maybe I want to do that too. <laughs> yeah. You know, and it's, it's the unexpected, you guys. So let me just grab, say, my cow thing. Now I punched holes out of here, right? Now you can then go like this. And again, just, it's just the whole overlapping thing. Like it doesn't even have to be, you know, yeah. uh, you could cut stri strips in here. You could uh, tear it, overlap it with something else. And, you know, this might really be exciting to you, this whole process. So yeah. uh, the idea of uh, beginning with photographs is certainly great. Um, what would your trees sideways look like over the cows? The trees sideways over the, the cutout cows. trees that you have? You mean this one? No, the cutout uh, template. Um, I don't know which one you mean. Well, you'll get to it later. We can okay. look later. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, okay. Sorry about that. Yeah. I don't quite you know. <laughs> it's all right. Another thing, guys, is that like we all talk about copying other artists. We don't want to do that, right? But we can be inspired by an artist and we can explore a way to um, abstract in a way. Like, let's say you're in love with Milton Avery. He is one of my favorite artists. And uh, what you can do is, because you don't want to copy him, but... What you can do is get ideas. So the way to, you know, and I know there's a book called Steal Like an Artist or something like that. But um, but you can you can kind of mix and match things. Ooh, so that it's, fun. it's not his. I mean, it is his, right? But but the point is that you can kind of take uh, ideas that come from somebody else, but you can change them dramatically, right? Like, you know. What if, what if you want to do something more like um, this and you start to piece together different portions? I don't know. I'm just thinking like the way to get ideas from other art is to start with that as a launching point, but then of course you don't want to copy it. You want to change it. So maybe you're in love with the colors that this artist has used. Maybe you're in love with the shape or something else about it. Um, number one, you can, you know, really crop it down and sort of this, this really is such a great idea, Pam, because we get stuck in exactly what we see and here you're cutting these up and turning them every which way <laughs> and making them so much more interesting than a yeah. traditional landscape. Well, I, I hope so. Like for me, like if I, for me to get excited about the landscape, just because I, you know, I'm not objective. So I, don't, I, I really don't want it to be too close to anything that I see in the real world. That's just my own thing, right? Not everybody is that way. But once you start to piece things together and then you get out your cropping things and then you're kind of like, well, what can I do that really makes this my own? Now, a person might say, oh, uh, you know, that kind of looks like Milton Avery. <laughs> but um, it's, it is. But again, you would add your own touch to this. You might add some line work to it. You might change your colors, right? But look at how gorgeous this is, right? And this is how we can um, learn from other artists, their palettes, their shapes, the way that they divide space, the way they simplify shapes. And look, even if you did this right here, and, and yes, you were inspired by Milton Avery, uh, but you're going to add enough twist to this. Like if you make this little guy red right here, and if you take this color up here and you make it a bright orange, um, and then you add some texture to this area, it's no longer Milton Avery's, okay? He's not going to come back from the grave and, and be mad at you. Um, so I think you just have to um, think in terms of ch um, changing, hybridizing. You can take multiple artists together, like a little bit of Milton Avery. And let me show you Wolf Kahn. Like Wolf Kahn is another amazing artist who, again, different way of looking at art, right? Um, now he, 
does a lot of pastel work and I, I happen to really respond to his work. And so I did some printouts here because again, Maureen's challenge is all about simplify, simplify, right? So um, when you look at some of the things in his book, he's greatly simplified the color by choosing a limited palette. Now these are not local colors because uh, you know, there's yellow in the grass, there's yellow in the sky. So he's chosen a limited palette with just a few colors. And he does that again and again. Like, look at how, look at how beautiful this one is. There's a lot of like um, scratchy marks here. He's doing a lot of pastel, but you know, this one could actually be oils. Uh, the point is that there's just a, like, he's not trying to get every leaf and every trunk or anything like right. that. Beautiful. Right. And uh, yeah, again, this is his style. And it'd probably be helpful. I didn't have I love that book. I might have to get that book. I know. I, I kind of splurged and decided to get, I don't, I don't actually collect all that many art books, but what his work really, really spoke to me. So let me just put that here. Um, again, this is not natural. Um, this is not what we see. We don't see a band like this. This is almost rectilinear. And so is this right here. We don't see that in nature, but that's what um, Wolf Kahn decided to do in his painting. And, uh, you know, these trees are suggestive, but he's not trying to get every branch or every twig or every leaf. And so um, he's really diverged away from reality. Mm -hmm. um, and another one here, which is just extraordinary. Now we were talking about simplified shapes. And in this case, we have like this fuzzy thing here, which you really see by value. It's very high key. So there's one fuzzy shape and then there's a darker shape. So one, two, three. And then down here is pretty much the fourth shape. So again, greatly simplifying something down to the bare bones. Like how much do you have to say to capture what you feel? Um, these artists are so good at it. And that's what appeals to us, right? Yes. Cool. Okay. Yes. So Maureen Howard mentioned that she always loved Wolf Kahn and his interpretations. And uh, it's very much related to what Toaf talked about, too. So that's fun. Yeah. And um, it can be, says, good artists borrow, great artists steal. And that was Picasso. Yeah. They're great, <laughs> great quotes. And yes. you know, coming from these masters, it gives you a little bit, you feel like you have a little bit more permission. <laughs> that's to right. Do these things. Okay. So now I'm going to just show you a couple of things that I'm working on um, in the studio. And um, before I do that, I just want to say that I have um, a brand new course that's coming and a lot of people already know about it. A lot of people have signed up and a lot of people have taken it. Um, and it's called uh, Art Success Masters. And let's see if I can remove this guy for a second. Um, yeah, so it's called Art Success Masters. And I actually put the website up here for those of you who are not already in my school. Um, this is the website you might want to go to foursteproadmap.com to watch my video that um, will walk you through the four steps that I have in my own studio. Um, free masterclass. It's a free masterclass, right? And um, this free masterclass describes what I've done routinely again and again and again and again over the course of years. And I, I distilled my practice down to these four steps that the more I did them um, kind of in order, the more I grew. And I'd say that my art really took off um, pretty exponentially when I started to do these things consistently. And so I decided to put this all into a course. And then we had like 700 artists beta test every single of these 12 master classes that just that are part of this roadmap. So if you're interested in really taking your art higher and higher, year by year, because um, at the end of the video, you're going to see that the course is a lifetime access course. I encourage you to watch the video and um, you'll get a really nice discount off my course. Now, yes. if you're already in one of my courses, then I would say that I can give you um, a better offer. So you should just email me at support at yes. artandsuccess.com. Okay. Right. So I just, and next yeah. month, next Monday, we're we'll Thank you, Lisa. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah, I was trying to get it posted for you, Pam. And for some reason, it won't let me post anything like a link. And even your email, apparently, it won't let me do. So I apologize. I could not get that in there. I will continue to try. Yeah, you can keep that link up there with the okay. email. 
So yeah. again, just, just let me tell you that um, if I were to give you guys homework for next Monday, <laughs> it'd be that you should, number one, watch that video, which is um, the four-step roadmap. Master, it's a free master class, okay? And then next Monday, we're going to have a panel of artists who um, we're going to show some of their art. They're going to answer some questions about the course. And um, you'll be able to ask anything that you want. So if you guys are um, new to my school, artandsuccess.com, uh, there's a really generous discount at the end of this uh, video. But if you are already in my school, then you get a better discount. So then you just have to email me at uh, support at artandsuccess.com. Okay, enough of that. All right. Yes. So. <laughs> yes. And I'm trying to get it all in there. <laughs> I know, Lisa. Poor Lisa. She's like, all over the place. It's like, okay, uh oh, glitch, glitch. Got to fix it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, this, this, there's a lot of tech, you guys, involved here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some things that are um, going on in my studio right now. And um, I've got some paintings that, um, some are almost like I popped them into a frame just because, um, let's see if we can add this guy back to the add to stream and then we'll move that here. Um, so this is one that I, um, I did with color that was a little bit more saturated than what I'm used to working with. And I just popped it into a frame, but this is an ampersand panel and this is called wax and oil. And like, for me, this is like how I feel trees. Like I, I feel them as like these, big shapes and I put in some really vibrant color. Um, but that was one thing I did. And then because I love line and mark making, so there is a lot of line in here, but you know, the choice between how much line and what kind of line, like this has line with an oil stick. This has line with a monoprint. This has line with a pencil. Um, but this one is actually an acrylic. Uh, this one was done with, um, it's actually collage and I did my line work on tracing paper, let it dry, and then I collaged it over. Um, this is actually all collage and acrylic. And so again, um, when you talk about abstracting the landscape, really, really think about, it, it comes down to what you love about the elements. So the elements being line, texture, how do you feel about color? Do you want value to be high contrast? So this is high contrast. This is lower contrast, you know, and, and this is vibrant color. This is more subdued color. And, you know, on any given day, you might be like, well, you know, I'm kind of feeling like more subdued today. Or another day you're like, wow, I really want to pull out the colors. So just do what you feel. What, what are you excited about? And then here's another one. Again, this is these were early experiments, actually, but sometimes I will, uh, like, this is the, one of the first times that I, I actually tried this tracing paper thing. And um, what, I, what I loved about it was that, you know, to do an, a spontaneous line like this at the end of a painting is almost impossible because you're like, wait a minute, <laughs> I don't feel too confident about that. But if it's tracing paper, you know, you're looking for the right kind of line and you just adhere it. And now you've got the line you wanted, but you didn't have to like take your, uh, this is a Sharpie, I wouldn't use a Sharpie, but for instance, you don't have to do this crazy thing on top of something that you feel is working, you can actually just collage the paper over it. So um, for me personally, this says landscape and it's because there's a band here, you know, there's a horizontal pull to it. And that typically is what is going to help the viewer feel that it's like a landscape. Now it could also be um, a, a vertical format, but typically um, vertical formats and these layers or strata give us a feel of a landscape. But again, uh, where I diverge from the typical landscape, there are so many ways, right? Color and uh, these crazy things. Well, what is that? I mean, I don't know, but because I love mark making, that's what's here. And, uh, you know, cloud, this could be a cloud, for example, this could be uh, clouds as well, but that doesn't matter. It, you know, this is just my idea of a landscape. So then I have this guy here that I was, thought I would do a little a attempt, right? Cause I never know what's gonna happen. This is, that's why live is live. <laughs> this is the trees I was talking about. Oh, okay. Well, I couldn't said, think of what to call it. <laughs> I know. Well, you know, it is Monday. Um, my coffee's yes. only half. I only have 
had half of my coffee, so. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had any, so it's a wonder I'm even able to make sentences. <laughs> well, Lisa, I'm so sorry to hear that. <laughs> it's all right. I that, just didn't get up in time. So I guess what I want to talk about is, um, you know, this is a slot board. It's been sitting in my studio for a while here. And you're kind of like, well, you know, I've got a slot board. And it could go in any direction. Uh, there's some there's some collage paper in here that I can see. And whether you can see it or not, I can maybe hold it up a little closer. There's some pattern making paper in there and all that kind of stuff. Well, this is really dry. And um, first thing I'm going to do, I've got my palette over here. I'll just show you what I have. Sneak it over here. I tried to like, um, no, not, not all these colors are on this paint, but I, I have a couple of things I, I might show you here. So let me just back this camera up here. Um, this is my palette. And these are uh, oils mixed with cold wax medium. Here's my cold wax medium that I put the Galka gel with. And I've got Indian yellow, white, black, and this is quinacridone red. And this is something I made. It's indigo, which is um, the ultramarine blue plus a little bit of black. And then, you know, just it's really dark. Uh, and that's what I had put into this guy. So I thought, okay, I'm just going to um, see what I can do with this guy which is again it's dry now i cut out this stencil last night i love now you can call it a stencil you can call it a mask you can call it anything you want but the point is that if, if you're going to do something like this you know uh what i like about it is that you're making it your own uh, nobody else is going to cut this out like i did uh nobody else is even going to want to do this right except maybe you and so um let me just see if i can Turn this guy over a little bit like that. Okay. So uh, I cut the reason why, and the reason I cut this out the way I did. What did you um, cut it out of, Pam? It's well, really this, okay. Yeah, this is newsprint. News, oh. Newsprint. Cheap, super cheap stuff. You can get to go to any like, um, well, you can order newsprint, but you can also go to a place that makes newspapers and say, hey, can I have your end roll? Can I have your newsprint roll? And they'll sell it to you for like five bucks. That's what I do. I, I go to the Missoulian and I get that. So I cut these out with a blade, but then I also had some strips that are torn. So um, let me just show it up more up close. You can see that some edges are um, torn. Yes, how wonderful. And Thanks. look at the detail in your slot board behind it. That's gonna be lovely. <laughs> yeah, so maybe I'll take this off. You can kind of see. Ooh. Um, one of the beautiful things about cold wax and oil is, of course, the texture. Um, you can see the super thick paint. You can see the texture from fabric. Mm. Camera. Um, yeah. So there are a lot of there's like some collage paper, a letter, and then there's my crazy line uh, stuff on the bottom. Love and that. It's done with a silicone tool. So uh, the question is, um, because we're talking about the landscape here. And abstracting the landscape, I decided to move this slot board. It is a slot board, guys. I and it may con continue continue to be a slot board for a long time. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> but all we can do is try. And so I'm going to place that here. And I thought a little bit about um, like value. And um, so what I think I want to do is I want to go from like gradation. I want to use gradation, which is a design principle. It's a really important one. And we don't often even think about it because it's kind of like one of those things that it's not at the front of our, our mind sometimes. But so I am going Excuse to. Excuse Pam. Yeah. We do have one question about your stencil. Okay. How did you tear it and keep it from messing everything up? Well, um, so let me grab a sheet of, here we go. All right. So now it's true that it took me a while to. to <laughs> it's not easy, right? This stuff yeah. isn't easy. <laughs> it's not, but it's also not so hard. Um, it's not, you know, not not terribly hard. I, I had a little cutting board like this. Let me just. Um, yes. Lori says probably slowly. <laughs> right. That's exactly right. <laughs> Um, and I did it freehand. I didn't draw it first or anything. Um, so I took my blade and make sure your blade's sharp. And I started to just do this kind of thing um, like this. And I, I actually, you know, like you can cut off. I, I really, I, I tried to make some that were thicker than others like this. And then I cut it like here and here and here. 
in here. Then I take them out like this, okay? Um, now then I, I wanted to have some little twiggy guys that were coming off like this. I actually tore this like, it, because it's it's newsprint, it's very thin paper. I tore it a few times, you know, that kind of thing. And I got out my scotch tape and I taped it together. <laughs> I instantly ripped it in half. I got out my tape. <laughs> So, so you, even yeah. if accidents happen, you can be fixed, right? Oh, yeah. Like, I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. I tore it in half. That's all right. <laughs> and, and sometimes, well, and then what I did, okay, for the other little guys, like, let's say this one, I was thinking about edges because I, I love edges. So I even, like, made some really big shapes like this. Now notice that I I respond to rectilinear. So if I'm gonna if I'm gonna depict nature, I'm gonna be using rectilinear because that's <laughs> the way my head works, right? Yes. I have yes. a really hard time with uh, like it's not that I don't like organic shapes, but so what I would do is I'd take a strip like this, you see, and I would tape it here. Oh. Yeah. And let me if you can't see it too well, maybe I'll put this guy underneath so you can see it better. And, and put the cast. I was say you could just hold it up to the camera after you okay. show us, because sure. that's wow. That's just excellent. I mean, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> perfect. Not crazy like I am. It's but, simple. Yeah, so simple, right? And and yes. look, you guys, you're gonna cut out shapes, and they're gonna be nothing like my shapes, and you're just gonna find your own way to do shapes. But shape is so such a huge uh, thing about your personal voice that that's why, like when I talked about the blind contour drawing, I talked about cutting things and you know taking photos and punching things out and moving them over. It all has to do with well, what kind of shapes do you like? You know. Now, yeah. like I said, this thing is dry. So the first thing I'm going to do when you work into like an older painting, this isn't even that old. It's <clears throat> not that old, but. Now, if I'm going to put a, a very delicate stencil like that, <clears throat> I'm going to put just a little bit of this cold wax medium over it, um, almost taking almost all of it off. But you see, I'm I'm reactivating the surface a little bit so that when I lay the newsprint on there, it has something to stick to because it's it's uh, has a mind of its own. And um, now I'm I'm just so you know, I'm removing almost all of it here. I'm just um, using my silicone tool to put it on and then take a lot of it off. So there's that. Now when I take this crazy thing, now this is crazy, right? It's got a mind of its own and I got to figure out which is the right side and the wrong side. Uh, then there's placement, like where do you want to put it? So um, I'm going to lay it here. And I did, I did look at the fact that this is a 12 inch wide panel <laughs> and uh, I'm going to place it so that, there we go. Now I taped it down because like I said, um, well, this strip down here was not here. I taped it down. Now that might've been a mistake because when I try to um, go over it with the paint, that might not have been a good idea, but it's okay. Whatever happens, happens. And let's see, so it's, um, I'm just placing it so that the bottoms of these trees lines up with these crazy marks. And then it's kind of moving up into this lighter area of the painting. You can kind of see that it gets lighter in value up there. So now mm. let's see if I can, I mean, yeah, it's not gonna really stick to that cold wax, but it's okay. We'll just see what happens. So now what I wanna do is, mm. let me let me think for a second here. Everything's um, always an experiment, right? Right. I'm gonna take some, and I know you can't, let me just turn my camera so you can see me mixing the paint here. And, Let's see okay so there's my palette um this is my dark indigo i love indigo right so i'm going to take the indigo and i i need i don't want it to be this dark so i need to change the value and i'm going to add some white to it here i spend a lot of time mixing so let me just do this okay that's lighter but not i, I want it to be a mid-tone uh, I don't want it to stand out too much. No, that's too saturated. So I added white. And I'm going to add just a tiny bit of black because black and white make gray. And now it's a tone. And right off the bat, that just makes it a little bit less saturated here. Okay, so that's still pretty vibrant. I'm going to add a little bit more of the cold wax. And um, 
I want to go lighter, a little bit lighter. And if I want to knock back the saturation a little bit, I can add its complement. This is blue. Now, this isn't quite orange. This is Indian yellow, but it, it tends to go a little um, orange. So I put a little dab there. I don't know how much I really want to add to this. Not too much. Just a little because that will knock back the saturation. And this is all part of color mixing. And you're um, doing cold wax and oil, right? Yes, I am. Yeah. And so let me just... Uh, paper here. Grab a little bit more white. So what I want to do is, because I want gradation, I want it to go from kind of lighter. So I'll go lighter at this end. I'll kind of keep that handy. And I'm kind of just looking at what I have there. A little bit more of the black. Again, I'm trying to make it duller, so I'm going to go for the gray instead of the blue because the blue would make it more saturated. So I'm trying to desaturate it with gray. That's getting pretty, pretty good. And then on this end, I want this to be a little darker. So here I can go a little darker because gradation means you're going from light to dark or dark to light. And, and I'm going to add a little bit of this blue because I don't mind a little bit more saturation. Now you can see the two different values here. And do I want to go darker than that? I think it's okay for now. So I'm going to take a silicone tool and be careful because <laughs> this is a little tricky. Um, so I put it onto my silicone tool here, right? Whoops, just a little bit. And what I'm going to do is kind of hold this down because this thing is very fragile. I mean, there's no, no telling that it's going to even stay intact. But I'm going to start to... Um, use my stencil or mask, whatever you want to call it. Now, the minute that I start to put this uh, paint and medium on here, you know, the, the newsprint's going to behave itself. That's why it's important to hold it first and just start to lay in your paint like this and, you know, change the angle of your tool because you're trying to fill in that little space that you cut out very carefully and tore a couple times and then taped. <laughs> hey, Pam, can you uh, move your painting yeah. a little more center? Gotcha. Thanks, Lisa. Thanks. Yeah, perfect. Let me zoom in a little bit. Oh, yeah. Very good. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, so now I'm applying the paint. And notice I'm not just like, you know, taking this one value and, and putting it all over the top because to me, that would be just like that's I want more variety. So I'm I'm selectively coming into this stencil and kind of just putting it randomly in a way because I want there to be some change. I want there to be some variation. So now that I've got, I'm going to be careful not to move that stencil, right? Um, it's okay if I do though, because no matter what happens is fine. There are no mistakes. Okay. Now that I put this color in there, I'm going to add some more white to this. Now that's a lot of white, but again, I want there to be some variety. So I don't want it to be just this one, um, Mid-tone, now I've gone lighter. I could add just a touch of this Indian yellow for interest. It's all about, you know, almost every time I go back into the painting, I want to adjust the color. Um, even if it's uh, in a minor way, um, it matters. To me, it matters. Now, I love this color. It's uh, hard to see it, but um, let's see, kind of a sagey, just off blue. It's kind of unusual. So now I'm going to come in here and, you know, again, I didn't finish uh, filling in the stencil and the colors will merge. Now there's not that much difference. I might want more difference, um, but all I can do is begin with something. Now, if that's not light enough, then I might have to add more white. So I'm like, okay, that's not light enough. Let me try lighter or even lighter. I go through a lot of white. Um, that's always like the largest <laughs> pile on my palette. Now that's really light. So instead of using this tool, I'm going to actually grab another one because this one has the mid-tone on it. And I'm just going to grab this guy. Now I know it'll be really light because I want some that are really light. Now you can see that, hopefully you can see now that that's really much lighter. 
Now I have to go kind of slowly. Don't be in a hurry because number one, this is newsprint. Very uh, kind of, you know, it's not very thick and you just want to go slowly and try to fill in all the little bumps because there was a lot of texture under here. And if it lifts up, don't worry. Um, just put it back in place. And again, I'm not just systematically going into each one of these in the very same way. Some cases I'm coming down here like this. Okay, so I'm kind of working from light down to the dark, which will be toward the bottom. And that was a decision I had to kind of make before I um, decided to put the paint on the stencil because I could, and I also could have flipped it so that this would have been the top and that would have been the bottom. But I just decided after thinking about value and, you know, how do I feel about this landscape and, and all those things. Now I'm going to dip back into the mid-tone and kind of blend. So I'm blending as I go, um, not worrying about really anything except filling in my stencil. And what I love about masks and stencils is that it's always a surprise. Like who doesn't want to be surprised by what they get? <laughs> it's like Christmas for me. Okay, so. And you can use any kind of paper or stencils to do this with, right? You just made your own. I did. You, you obviously can use store-bought stencils, but I, 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 there are times when I will use store-bought stencils, but um, that's usually when I, I'm trying to do a circle. <laughs> <laughs> and dots. But if it's something like an organic shape, I mean, um, and, and newsprint is, you know, it's not only is it inexpensive, but it's actually when it's, if you're working with cold wax and oil, it's actually one of the very best papers you can get. Because number one, the oil, for whatever reason, does not go to the other side of it. It does not seep through it. Oh. Don't ask me why. I have no, I don't know why. But I just love that about newsprint. Yeah, that I had no idea. And Lori uh, Davis Sandoval wondered if you could put like some kind of gel medium on it uh, prior to it, like both sides, and then you could even reuse it, wipe off the oil and cold wax probably. And yeah, maybe, I save, yeah. yeah, I save my stencils, Lori, because when they dry, you're right, they now are like stronger because they have some paint on them. And, you know, again, it's newsprint. They're not going to last 200 years, but <laughs> definitely I can use them again. And yeah. I like, I love that. Like, you know, you, you do all the work to cut it out. You don't have to throw it away. Um, right. So again, I, I don't know what's going to happen here. But, and uh, my idea was to go darker toward the bottom, but I can kind of see that, um, we'll see. Uh, and of course, this is just one step. It does, after I lift the stencil, I'll be doing other things. So this is only a stage here. But I have to, I hold it down when I lift my hand because I'm trying to keep this thing in place. And then I want to go to a darker color and I'm going to really make it a lot darker. Add some black. Mix it really well. So I, I am mixing uh, some color on the painting itself, but I'm also mixing some on the palette because just it's easier to do it that way. So now I'm coming up from the bottom to the top. Notice the direction of my tool is going this way instead of coming down that way. It's going to meet up with that lighter color. And I don't know, like I'm not able to blend it too well to go from dark to light. And that's where I might have to let it dry and then come in with a brush and do the finessing um, with a little bit thinner paint. But right now, that's not my concern. I don't care what it looks like. Um, all I care about is that I'm moving this thing forward and trying to um, get as much variation in value, color, so that there's interest. Now I've added a lot of black to this. Now there's some really nice dark. It's still got blue in it. It's not just black and white. It's got a little bit of blue and a little bit more. But again, this, um, whatever color it is, whatever value it is, can all be changed with um, once it's dry. Because once it's really wet like this, I can't do a whole lot with it. But let's see if I can. All right, I'm going to come in here and Right, so this guy had a little bit more cool wax medium just to mm. 
Do you use other uh, stencil papers with cold wax and oil, other kinds of stencil papers, or do you always just use newsprint because it doesn't go through? You know, I think um, if, if I ran out of newsprint, you could easily use freezer paper, you could use wax paper, you could use deli paper, it really doesn't matter. But the reason I use the newsprint is number one, when you when if you're if you happen to get a roll of it from a newspaper uh, office, um, there's so much on there, it'll literally last you like a lifetime. And I put it on a roll with a blade uh, that will cut it for me. So it just sits on the floor. And I just reach out to that it's on the floor and I, I, I grab newsprint for when I'm doing encaustic monotype. So it's also versatile. Like I use it for, um, Lisa, when you were here, remember I used the, we used the monoprint, the paper to soak up the wax. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's, it's very good for that as well. And, uh, okay. We just almost done here guys. Yeah. And Maxine said, um, she noticed that you're moving upward as mm -hmm. you're painting and it's creating a blend. Yes. And, um, right. Good, ob good observation. Yeah. And you're right. That was what I was hoping to do was that like start from light on the top and start from the dark on the bottom, um, and try to have them meet in the middle and hope that it works. <laughs> There's always a sense of hope, but no guarantees. There never any guarantees. You try it and see, and it's, uh, not finished anyway so it's going to be more fun stuff happening yeah. and uh, let's see Lori said it'd be cool to take the old stencils and make a strata painting just with them yeah there you or go abstract strata something yeah because this is looking wonderful <laughs> super you fun so, you guys are so nice <laughs> no seriously I mean we can oh, see the um, possibilities right well I'm glad you can because <laughs> I realized one one reason why I like to paint, I guess, live is because there is no no time to overthink things. You just do it, right? <laughs> like you can't, I, there's no reason, no way that I can think too hard about this when I'm trying to do a demo. And like, if my materials aren't cooperating with me, it just doesn't even matter. It's just, it doesn't matter. Just <laughs> keep going and uh, that's fine with me. So that's, that's why these live ones, you just never know what's gonna happen. My camera may choose to look at the ceiling. And, <laughs> and it is, we are at an hour. So just to let you know where we're at for now. Okay, guys, I'm, I'm going to pull this off and we'll see how it looks. Um, <laughs> hey, uh, Maureen Howard says she doesn't know how you don't peek. <laughs> yeah, well, so Ooh. I'm going to let this thing dry. And it's, it's kind of a mess, you know, but well, what I would... Yeah, it's um, certainly about what I thought it would be. So that's that's one thing. Um, and what I would do with this is I'm going to need to let this dry. And then what I wanted to do was like, um, even now I could do some of this is like, I don't want these hard edges down here. So the first thing I'm going to do is blend these hard edges on the bottom. You can do that while it's wet. So why not do it while it's wet? So what I mean is that you can kind of see the bottom where, oops. Yeah. Yeah, I can... I can soften these just with my finger and let them come into the foreground. And um, and then the same thing up here, like I don't really want these blunt, um, you know, uh, twigs and branches and, and limbs and things. So just with my finger, you can play with this. And, um, and if I had more time, I was actually gonna add some more like branches and things like that, but um, yeah, so, so there is a bit of gradation, but, um, do you know what you did to get the marks on the slot board at the bottom? Yeah, this was like, I had, um, paint here and I took a tool like this one here. Um, it's a silicone tool. Okay. It has a chisel end. Uh -huh. And I just, I, I know that I just did this kind of thing like that. Yeah. So, um, so at this point, I think I'm going to just let this kind of set up, but like what I want to do with this, um, we'll see. But like right now, it's it's not too bad. You know, it, I think that uh, when it dries, I would come in here and finesse the value, finesse the gradation so that like if I got dark going into light, it's not too bad. Like right now that the gradation is a little bit abrupt here going from gray to light. So I'd kind of, um, I might work into this with some, 
oil pastels or some pigment sticks or some cray pods. I probably would add more line, uh, probably simplify a little bit more of this top. But you guys get the general idea that abstracting the landscape, it's like there is just so much. And what I didn't have time to show you, but um, another one I had going was this guy. And this one, again, it's a slop board. I just was using up some leftover paint. And then as I was thinking about the landscape, it was like, well, okay, this, this actually is kind of, if I close the bottom part here, like I'm feeling like this is very landscapey to me. And, but this got a little bit too crazy on here. So I would just like simplify this down here. And I probably will um, do that, you know, kind of with some of this leftover paint and then just move this into more of an abstract landscape. So yeah, guys, that's kind of it. So um, I hope that was helpful to you and I hope you'll join us. Um, I hope you'll watch the video that's been posted, this foursteproadmap.com. Um, again, that's for everybody. Um, it kind of shows you my process that I've used for the last 20 years. And a lot of artists that I've worked with have also used the process, right, Lisa? You've used it. Oh, yes, absolutely. And we're saying like artists like grow their work leaps and bounds with these four steps. They're very kind of clear and distinct and they are repeatable so that once you learn it, you do it for life. This is not just something you do one time in your studio. You kind of just adapt to this process and do it for the rest of your life. And if you watch that, um, we're going to have a Q&A and a panel next Monday for our live, okay? So yes. we hope to see you back. And thank you so much for joining us. It was really fun. Um, and congratulations to Maureen Berger, who won our contest for the Rexart Frames and Panels. And the topic was abstracting the landscape. So thank you, Maureen, for your wonderful submission. And thank you, Lisa. You're Let welcome. me see if I can um, make you bigger, which is always, oh, there we go. We yeah, <laughs> need to be like the same size. <laughs> okay, guys, any other questions before we take off here? Everybody's loving everything you showed today. It's been wonderful. All, All the right. tools and the stencils and yeah awesome. it's just real good so okay. yeah and, and of course pam they want to see what you do with those pieces so yeah. <laughs> i'll probably continue to work on these after the call and i'll be recording it and um that content will either go on youtube or it might go into my watch and go library um but in any case yeah i'm trying to like document it because it, you know what if you guys document your own process it's so helpful to remember what you did mm. and um yeah so thank you all for joining us Thank you, Lisa. Uh -huh. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.